أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ربي شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم الحمد لله All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him We seek his help And ask him for forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala From all evil in our soul And from all wrong actions Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides No one can guide And I testify There is none worthy of worship Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is one having no partner And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and give him peace with his family and companion. Verily, the best speech is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, we've all gathered here after Salat Faradul Maghrib. And alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our prayers. Ameen, ya Rabbal Alameen. Alhamdulillah, yet another session where we are discussing on the large chapter of Tawheed And this time we're doing it on a Tuesday instead of Wednesday And precisely we are discussing on Arkanul Islam Afwan, we are discussing on Arkanul Iman And from the previous lesson we have covered and understand on the 20 attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And we have moved into the second Arkanul Iman which is believing in Allah, in angels. And then the third arkan, which is believing in the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And currently, this is our current stop. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may all, may all those lessons that we have traveled together in the journey indeed be beneficial for us in practicing, understanding it in our daily worship, especially. Dearest congregation, as mentioned, believing in the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is where we stopped and we will move on in a while time. But just I would like to, re I would like to recap a few steps. Yani, Arkanul Iman, there are six of them. The first is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, believing in the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the third, is to believe in the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Fourth, his books Fifth, the last day And the sixth, or the last one In the six pillars of Iman Is predestination, which is qada and qadar Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And we are in the third fundamental yani, To believe in the messengers of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala From all previous lessons We understood that there are many messengers of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala And that there are only 25 of the messengers Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That were all mentioned in Al-Quran And they are Adam Adam Idris Enoch Noah Noah Hud Hiba Saleh Matsu Saleh, Lut, Lot, Ibrahim, Abraham, Ismail, Ishmael, Ishaq, Isaac, Yaqub, Jacob, Yusuf, Joseph, Shu'aib, Jethro, Ayub, Job, Dhul Kifli, Ezekiel, Musa, Moses, Harun, Aaron, Dawood, David, Sulaiman, Solomon, Elias, Elias, Eliasa, Elisha, Yunus, Jonah, Zachariah, Zechariah, Yahya, John the Baptist, Isa, Jesus, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From last year, we have started to talk and explain 
at great detail about Adam and then Prophet Idris alaihi salatu wassalam and then Sayyiduna uh, Nuh alaihi salatu wassalam we spoke also on Nabi Allah Hud alaihi salatu wassalam and from the last session also we spoke about Nabi Allah Saleh alaihi salatu wassalam all this we spoke in details if you want to come back to the understanding of it you can watch the videos that are captured in the mosque alhamdulillah masjid darul ma'mur make a recording of uh, the sessions that we had so if you missed and you want to know about those prophet that i mentioned just now namely there are five of them yani adam idris uh, noah hud and saleh i have spoke about them in details you can check it out in the videos that are captured in the mosque of Darul Ma'mur, inshallah. So the life of Prophet, Prophet Saleh, which is the last Prophet that mentioned, it is described also in other passages in the Quran, in Surah Al-Radu, verse 61 to 68, Ashura, verse 141 to 159, Surah An naml verse 45 to 53. So I stop there. From the last session that we had probably in December. Inshallah, dearest congregation, while waiting for the time of Isha, inshallah, we will have Isha at about 8.32 today. I'll try to stop by then. We are going to talk a little bit about Nabi Allah Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. So after Sayyidina Saleh came this one known Nabi. And he is also known as one of the Ulil Azmi. I have mentioned this in the previous um, uh, Kuliya, that there are five Ulil Azmi. If you want to capture their names, if you are in Masjid Sultan, you can see it in front. If you go to Masjid Sultan, you will see on the right side, it will be started with Ibrahim, and then Moses, Musa, and then Noah, and uh, Isa and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, five of them. So Ibrahim alaihi salatu wasalam is one of them, and inshallah, we are going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Nabi Allah Ibrahim alaihi salatu wasalam. So, of course, Nabi Allah Ibrahim is one of the very known uh, prophets in Islam, mentioned in the Quran about sixty-nine times. Ibrahim alaihi salatu wasalam was mentioned in Al-Quran about 69 times, while the mention of his son, Ismail, about 12 times. In nutshell, these two prophets are very well known because when Dhul Hijjah comes or when Dhul Hijjah falls, we will commemorate them in the festive that is known as Eidul Adha. Or oh, those who went to Hajj at that particular time, will be remindful of Nabi Allah Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam and in fact his whole family. So, being said that Ibrahim and Ismail is a well-known prophet in Islam and mentioned 69 times, I'm sure we have known that Prophet Hud and other prophets, Nabi Allah uh, Nuh was, was mentioned 169 times. There are more prophets in Islam that I that mentioned a lot in Al-Quran, more than Nabi Allah Ibrahim. But somehow, Nabi Allah Ibrahim is well known to us. Ibrahim, in fact, I'm sure one of us here probably are named after Ibrahim, or probably your son, or probably your nephew. Ibrahim is a very common name that we have. And Ibrahim is also a common name for the Christians. And for the Judaism also. These three religion, they all call Ibrahim as the father of all prophets. As they believe in Ibrahim, somehow the storyline is a bit twisted by the time Ismail arrived. We will talk about that inshallah. So, in a nutshell, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam to sacrifice Ismail. He obeyed Allah's command 
but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced Ismail with a sacrificial uh, uh, animal, with a sheep, at the last moment of time where Ibrahim has decided that he's going to slaughter his own son. And Prophet Ismail also built Kaaba after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed them to do so. Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam is subsequently not questionable. He is the forefather of all Arab, all Arab lineage, including Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is in lineage or is in the line of their forefathers is Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam. We will also know later Isaac or Ishaq is the another brother of Ismail. And from his lineage, the Judaism, the Jews, came from. So, there are the two brothers. Of course, in some of the contexts in Judaism, Ismail was never there. It was always Ishaq. It was always Isaac. And there were no Ismail. Those are the extreme side of some um, scriptures. Uh, but somehow, uh, we... And in Islam, we believe Ismail alayhi salatu was salam is a Rasul, is a Prophet. He is one of the uh, son of Ibrahim and he is the forefathers of all Arabs. So dearest congregation, for a start, let us take a look at Prophet Ibrahim in focus. And uh, he is known, like what I said, to the father, to the three religion, Christian, Judaism and Islam. And Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam in Islam was born in Babylon. Babylon, probably the name is not that familiar with us. If I say Babylon, it's not really familiar. Probably the people from the 60s or 70s will hear the songs of Babylon, Babylon in deep purple probably. Uh -huh. So anyway, probably it's not known to us Babylon, but in Islam, or oh, now, today, Babylon is Baghdad, is in Iraq. So, sometimes we hear um, or we read that Ibrahim was born in Babylon. Babylon is Iraq. Babylon is Baghdad. Once upon a time, it is known as Babylon. So, in present time today, it's Iraq. And during those times, it's a place where it is manifested. There are a lot of people that is practicing idolatry. In fact, we will know later on that Ibrahim's father, Azar, his name is Azar, he is the maker of statue. Subhanallah. The father of Ibrahim. Ibrahim's father is also part of those people that were praying to idols. Not only that, but his father is the maker. So he will get some mud and so on. He is the, he is the maker. He, he is the craftsman of idols that was worshipped, that were worshipped in Iraq in those times or in the time of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. But intelligent and protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this seven-year-old Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was seven years old, he questioned his father about the God he was building with his hand and laugh at the idea. Seven years old, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given protection to him that he did not buy the idea of praying to idols. Statues is not part of his understanding. Seven years old, he asked his father, why are you doing this? You're making your own with your own hand and people are praying to something that is a stone. Seven years old. So, his father, like what I mentioned just now, Azar is an idol maker. So one night, at the age of seven, eight, he went up. Ibrahim decided to go up to a mountain and was thinking about the stars and the moon. This is a practice in Islam that is often given way to tafakkur. He was doing this. And he was doing tafakkur. Tafakkur in, 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 in the religion of Prophet Muhammad in the hadith, it is mentioned tafakkur for one hour. 
tafakkur meaning to say you think about the 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 the, the, the thing that is in front of you the mountain the sky how this is a wonder to the world and you come back to the understanding of Allah that is the understanding of tafakkur and the hadith that i mentioned just now tafakkur for one hour in a state where you are not doing anything it's better than 13 years of doing ibadah at night i mean if you are doing ibadah at night for 13 years just for one hour you go to Pulau Ubin probably because today, as I mentioned, in Yishun, you can go out in a very bright sky, but you can never see stars. Why? Because our place is too bright. You cannot see too much of stars. But if you go to Pulau Ubin, you go to some island in Batam, probably the one inside, the, that when there is so dark, you will see lots of stars. This will bring back to how carefully how pristine how precise how great is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his uh, with his things or with his with the things that he create so again here let us just go back to ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam he decided to go out to a mountain and then he wants to do the tafakkur. He look at the stars. He look at the moon. And during those time, those are the other thing other than the idols. These people in Iraq during his time, they also worship the sun. They also worship the moon. They also worship the stars. Yani, apart from idols, they also pray to this. So Ibrahim went up to the mountain. He realized that there are some point that the moon appear. There are some point that the sun appear. There are some point there is no stars available to be seen. So he did not buy the idea. He continued to search for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was his search. During, yeah, that was, it was mentioned in Al-Quran in a few times where Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was looking at the sun and he disappeared. And he said, this is not Allah. This is not God. This is not right. That is the understanding that he cannot accept what that he saw or what he sees in his time, in his period of time where people are doing the acts of worship. So one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him into the truth and he came to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala existed and then called to his people, including his father, to Islam and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one God, the only one to be worshipped. However, of course, like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, oh, like Prophet Idris, like Prophet Hud, like Prophet Noh, like Prophet Saleh, like we have mentioned before, all those people after Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, they were the people that had great issues had great uh, problem, had great issues when they tried to introduce the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Ibrahim tried to do so, trying to make his people understand that idol worship, sun worship, whatever worship, does not, has no power to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he tried to explain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they did not believe him. So, there were a lot of times that he tried. And then, the ayah in Al-Quran mentioned about Ibrahim made a plan to destroy the idol in the temple when the people were at this festive in a river bank. And Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam says, Oh, I have a headache today. I cannot follow you. It's an, it's an annual thing in a river bank where everyone in the village will leave the village and they will just go to another place to do acts of worship somewhere and they will leave their village all along. So Ibrahim, on that very particular year, he did not want to follow. He lied. In one of the mentioned, uh, you know that he lied to actually prove something to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This lying 
that he lied is accountable because we are not supposed to lie at all. Prophet Ibrahim alaihi salatu wasalam mentioned in Al Quran that he has a headache. He has a headache that he cannot. He do not want to follow. He do not want follow. Do not want to follow the group. Masha Allah. This saying, this said, sentences recorded in Al Quran. Also, it is mentioned that he lied at that spot to make a statement because after everybody leave, he break all the idols. He breaks all the idol and then he leave behind the biggest one. And he put the axe that he used to break every single idol statue, he put it on the hands of that biggest one. Why? Because when people come later on, they will say, who did all this? And then he say, and people will definitely find him because he's the only one that is anti the statues. So they will say, then he would want to say that, oh, I didn't do anything. It's the biggest of the statue that is doing it. That is actually an implication to make those people down there think that it is impossible for a statue to break something. In other words, why are you praying to a statue? That was the statement supposedly to be on the other villages to understand that they are not supposed to pray to the statue because the statue cannot do any harm nor do any benefit to us. I'm coming back to the lying that he statement. So it is known that Yawmul Mahshar, everyone will be in distress. This is another story, but I just want to relate to the matter of lying. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the state of anger, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not want to do anything else but they, yani all of us, all of the ummah, from ummah uh, Nabi, Allah, Ib, uh, Nabi Allah Adam until the ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that include us, in mahshar, when we were in the state of heat, very hot, it is known, it is mentioned that the heat is something like just one, uh, just about this height, the, 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 the heat, they mentioned heat, is something like that. It's something like, yeah, it's very hot. But anyway, at that present moment, everyone will be in distress and do not know what to do. They will go one by one to all the prophets, searching for them, so that they can do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so as to lighten, so as, has to, uh, so as to uh, subside the moment of distress at that time, the most distressed moment of time in Mahshar. So they search for Ibrahim, they search for uh, Allah Muhammad Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, and Nabi Allah Adam says, I have seen, I have seen in a state that I do not know whether or not my dua would be a comfort or would be a wrath from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because I am told not to be close to the tree, but somehow I ate the fruit I seen. If I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this present moment, I do not know whether it's going to be a comfort or a wrath. And I am accountable for my mistake, although Allah has forgiven him. And then go to Nabi Allah Hud. The same story. He has do, did dua. Nabi Allah no. He has did dua that destroy all the humankind. He says, I have used my dua and this is, I am accountable. I have seen. I need to uh, repent myself also. If I do this dua, I do not know whether it's going to be comfort or not. They went to the other prophet also and they came to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and Ibrahim answered was, I have lied. This is the moment. He said, I have lied. I lied. Yani, I lied to the people that I was sick on that day. But that lie is actually, I would say, you would want to say a white lie. Or some of us will say, bohong sunnah. But that is not a bohong. A bohong, a lie, can never be in place in a Muslim life. There is no such thing as bohong. The truth is something that we are told to do. 
So in other words, when Ibrahim said to the people that I got headache, I cannot follow you, is actually to 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 do something with regards to dakwah. But instead, like what I mentioned just now, when he said that, when he says and he left the big axe on the biggest of all the statue, when they came back and they say, this statue cannot be doing it. It must be you. But he's, then he called, he called back to his people. Come on, he says. The axe in his, his hand. Definitely he is the one who do. And then they answered back. This is a statue. A statue cannot do anything. And you are making fun of us. So the complaint came by. To his father, to the leader of the people. And then straight to Zam- yani to, uh, to Namrud. Namrud is the king during that time, during that moment of uh, Ibrahim's pre- period. The king during his time, his name is Namrud, very well known, notorious Zalim. So, and he is equivalent to Fir'aun. Fir'aun, who considered himself as God, Namrud, the same thing. So, when he heard about this, uh, this happening, he says, oh, he destroyed one of the gods. Because he himself feel and know that he himself is a god. He thought. So, he says, let us do the biggest of all, the, 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 the most stressful of all punishment to this man. He destroyed the statue. He dares to do that. So, there was this law making and it was verdict that Ibrahim is supposed to be punished in a punishment that there is none on that period of time had happened in the sense of punishment to him. That is, he was to be burned alive. He was to be burned alive. And it is not an ordinary kind of barbecue or burn like that. But, they actually planned the whole scenario of burning Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has better plan. What he was supposed to do is that he was supposed to be deep pit. Or I would say, uh, he would, they would uh, dig a very deep hole. A very deep hole in a very big field. And it was told that all of the villages, because it happened to the villages, he broke the whole statue in the villages, that all the villages are supposed to collect the big wood. And the collection period was not just one day, it is month. For month, they collect all the wood. In fact, at that time, people do nazar for this. How? I'm sick. They say, anybody who collect wood for Ibrahim, if you are sick, if you nazar that this collection of wood to burn Ibrahim, for you will be shafa. You will be uh, cured from your uh, sickness. So any old people down there, they collect every single thing. They make a big collection. And that collection of wood was known to have a lot that it dug deeper and deeper, deeper. And it was lighted a few days before he was lastic inside. That was the very first year. That was the very first time engineering was created. Ibrahim was placed in a catapult. If you know, another word for catapult is lastic. Yani, they engineered. It's not just rubber, but there is something, machinery that they do in two places and then Ibrahim was at the end of it and they will lastic it. That means they will pull krak, 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 right behind. That was the first year. That was the first time human engineering did catapult. And it was, it was for Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. So he was pulled in a very long distance. Because like what I said, they want to really show that he really died in the pit, in the middle of a very big field that was dark. That was dark. It's not just field full of wood and they throw him inside. It's not like that. They want to confirm the death of Ibrahim. And Allah wants to show something. Because we know 
that he survived inside there. So, the day come. Ordered by the notorious King Namrud, they chained Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, dug a deep hole, filled it with fire, lift with fire, wood, and light the intense fire. This wood, like what I mentioned, was gathered for months, and the fire was lighted for days. They want thing, they want the intens- intensity of that of that fire, and they bu- they built that catapult especially for him. So when the engineer they want to pull, when they are about to release Ibrahim. Jibril alaihi salatu wasalam came up to him and he said this. Jibril said something, he says, whether he wished for something or whether he won anything, this is something, a story related very much to what happened in Ta'if with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasalam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasalam was really done, damage done. They have already throw stones at, uh, at Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was bleeding. There were hatred, anger, whatever that you can say as a normal human being. And when the Prophet came to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked Prophet Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, do you want anything? Do you want a dua? Do you want to destroy these people? Do you want to get these two mountains? And we whack the whole of Ta'if. But Prophet Muhammad in the state of anger, he did not say anything but he did not want that thing to happen to that, those people. Again here, coming back to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, in the state of before letting go the catapult, before he went in, into that deep uh, sea of fire, in front of him, Jibril asked him, do you want anything? Do you want anything that you want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And his answer was, he only want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with him, with him. And he did not want anything. If it is from Allah, then I want. If I am the one who asks, I do not want. <coughs> that statement is a well-known statement. It's a well-known accumulative understanding of Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. This dua translated, sufficient for us is Allah. He is the best disposer of all affairs. I think in another hadith, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was also recorded saying to a man who asked, how can I feel at ease from the angel of trumpet? Is Rafil is the angel of trumpet. And when that is blown, that is going to be a doomsday. The man fear of the blowing of this trumpet from uh, Israfil. And he asked Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how can I feel at ease when the angel of trumpet, Yani Israfil, one of the four angels has put his lips on the trumpet and is waiting to, uh, he's waiting for the order to blow it. He, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, perceived it as it had shocked the companion also. So he told them to seek comfort through reciting, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. In another incident. So this saying in a mention in Al Quran also by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who revealed in Surah Al Imran verse 173 Ba'da Udu Billahi min al Shaytan Rajim Aladina kala lahumun nasu inna nasa kajama u lakum fakhshawhum bazada hum imana wa kalu hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. In the translation it goes like those of whom the hypocrites they said to these people, indeed the people have gathered against you, so fear them. So there's this one group that try to make fear with another another person. But these people they say, but it merely increased them in faith, and they said to them that said that, that said that to him, he says, Hasbunallah huwa ni'mal wakil. Now I want to relate this verse of Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. And at the point of Ibrahim when he was about to be released, the understanding of Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil is a very great deal for us. For us. Yeah. Because at that present moment, I do not know I want to bring you all there or not. But just imagine that you are 
at the moment of death and not a joking death. It is in front of you where there is fire and it, was, it is a pool of fire that is a confirmed death. And it is a moment where He created that and He knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save Him. In the moment of shock for us, Normal people, we will definitely be asking, Oh yes, Jibril, please help, oh, please ask Allah to help me. Uh -huh. Definitely. But not Ibrahim. When he is in full capacity of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lesson learned for us in that moment of time where you are at a moment where it's a definite no way out. Your dhikr, your understanding, your acts of remembrance is hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. There is no one that can, you, can give you the best protection except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, a point for us to make out of that story is such that if we are in a state of difficulty, your dhikr, your acts of remembrance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nothing can destroy nothing can happen even though the rules of the world is like that what is the rule of the world here the rule of the world here is that he will be burned but subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so get back to the story anger was burning in their in the people's heart they were very angry with ibrahim so they decided to throw ibrahim into the biggest fire that they could build all the citizens was ordered to gather wood, service to their God. Yani as example of service to their God. Uh -huh. So the catapult was shot and Ibrahim was cast into the fire. It happened. When Ibrahim was given the chance to dua, to ask Allah to stop the whole thing or to maybe get uh, Jibril to just lift him up or let go of the, uh, of the uh, uh, things that, that was capturing him, Nothing like that happened. Ibrahim was let off with that thing. He was shot. And then Ibrahim cast into the fire. But his, des his descent, he came into the blast. Yani, first of all, the miracle is not just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save him from the fire. Let's count this. Yeah? The catapult pulled out. He was thrown out. And this is very far. Jatuh saja sudah mati. When he fall, that's it. Can die. But, subhanallah, Allah saved him from that fall. Uh -huh. And he descended into steps of cool garden. The flame were just still there, but they did not burn Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty has issued a command and that command is recorded in Al-Quran. بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قلنا يا نارو كوني بردا وسلاما على إبراهيم. Oh fire! Allah subhanahu wa taala instruct the fire. This is without Ibrahim doing doa. This is without anything that was a help. But it was a plain help from Allah subhanahu wa taala due to His diligent of trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Al-Quran, O fire, be you coolness and safety for Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk to the fire that Allah create. You do not burn like fire, but you make it cool. Subhanallah. Another story, another thing to lengthen the whole thing. First, like what I said, he fall out, up and down. That itself is a death. He fell down into the coolness of fire. He only goes out from the field in about a few days. Because due to the large place. Subhanallah, not only Allah save him in the fire, but the fire also give him rizik. Because he definitely has to drink. He definitely has to eat. And for that few days until he go out of that place, he was saved by Allah subhanahu Wa very big lesson for us. 
very, very, very big lesson for us. For us to be in complete trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you know what you are doing is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the tawakkal inside you has to be as strong as hasbunallah huwa ni'mal wakil. This is something that we can learn. So when the king of Babylon, Namrud, learned about this event, uh -uh, he was more angrier than ever. First, he thought that was the settlement for uh, Ibrahim. Now when he heard that he was saved, he was more angrier. So he claimed that he himself is a god, that Ibrahim was an imposter. Of course, he always tell that he is a god. So he asked Ibrahim, what Allah can do that he cannot. And then he showed an example. He, Namrud, he said, call Ibrahim and ask Ibrahim what your God can do that I cannot. Look at this, he said. He bring two person. He said, this one, let live. This one, kill him. I am in charge of death and life, he says. Such a cool thinking, but stupidity. That was Namrud saying that he has power. And then Ibrahim definitely says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can raise up the sun from here. Can you do that? So that was the silence that Namrud gave. And of course, the continuation of what Ibrahim had after this, inshallah, I will continue in next week because it is time, like about three to four minutes before we enter Isha. Inshallah. The next event of Ibrahim we are going to talk about is going to be his involvement with his wives and also Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam and how he built the Kaaba. Inshallah, that will happen next week. Allahu alam bi sawab. We will meet again next week, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa karim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. Rabbana infa'na bima alamtana, Rabbi faqihna wa faqih ahlana, Rabbana la tuzir qulubana ba'da idha daytana, wa hablana min ladunka rahmata innaka anta al-wahhab, ya muqalib al-qulubi wal-absar, thabbit qulubana ala dinik, Allahumma arina haqqa haqqan, warzukna tiba'ah, wa arina batila batilan, warzukna ajtinabah, Allahumma rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatan, wa fil akhirati hasanata wa qina adhaban nar, اللهم ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحان سبحانك ربك رب إزت 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 أما يسفون والسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين